All right. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us. As a reminder, we have you muted for our initial briefing. Once the briefing is finished, you can use the Zoom application to either raise your hand for a question or you can type your question in the chat. If you've called in via phone only, you can use star nine to raise your hand. In addition, please make sure to identify yourself by your full name and the organization or media outlet you are from prior to asking your questions. With that, I'll turn it over to County Manager Mike Callaghy. Thank you, Penise. I really appreciate it. Welcome uh, to everyone uh, for the Wednesday, May 13th uh, briefing. Um, I'll jump right into the numbers. We're uh, over 1,500 now positive in the county. It's plus 18. Uh, from Tuesday, and Tuesday was a plus 33. So uh, I'm also sorry to report that our death rate has increased to 65 now, 65. Um, as you go to some of the dashboards, you can see some new things. Maybe go down to the next one, please. And just I'll stop there for a second. <coughs> just let you uh, note that there's 49 um, uh, hospitalized now with COVID-19. The ICU rate is up. 51%, so we've got 49% capacity there. And uh, of course, that does not uh, indicate all COVID members are in ICU, but there's other emergencies going on out there, but plenty of room with ventilators and uh, surge capacity. Let's see if we can go to the next one. Uh, yeah, so let's, uh, let me focus on this is because there's a new feature on this. Um, and this isn't updated uh, yet to comport with what we have, which just reported, but. Uh, this will break it down by city instead of the uh, zip codes. So you can see that San Mateo and Redwood City and Daly City, of course, the biggest cities um, have the most cases reported. But this is in no way indicative of the true number of cases out there. We think it's a lot more than this. Um, and as Dr. Morrow has, has stated many times, uh, it should be uh, the way that it should be looked at is that every person you talk to um, has this uh, and uh, is infected in every shopping cart or doorknob you touch is potentially infected. Um, if we go back to uh, the one with the uh, county uh, lab data, yeah, perfect. Uh, I'm sorry, the next one, I think it's the next one. I uh, just want to cut a couple of notes. Um, uh, now, keep going, keep going forward. Oh, that that one. Yeah, sorry. sorry. We, haven't get to, we haven't got to yet. Just a couple of notes here that we're down to 1.5. So, so the turnaround on testing is getting better. And we're getting more tests through, which is great. Um, we're appro we're uh, approaching almost 20,000 tests. Uh, and as that number increases, you'll see the, the positive ratio come down. We're down at 7.9. And that'll keep falling as we get more people through. Uh, a new graph we'd like to show you, and, and uh, it's just uh, up for a day or two now, is really uh, the long-term care facility data. This is that, that I think a lot of people were asking about. Um, to show you where most of the cases are, independent or assisted living, of course, um, but to also show you that more than half of our deaths are associated with uh, long-term care facilities uh, and, uh, and certainly many hospitalizations. The, the reason we show you this is and also to report that, you know, this is why we put that task force together and we went in um, as a county uh, to really uh, work with the staff in these uh, care facilities to make sure that they understood proper procedures and uh, how to somewhat isolate people and really how to don and doff uh, PPE. So that was critical and I just want to thank uh, the health Peter she and the staff here for really taking that on and putting that unit together. They've done a wonderful job at that. Um, the, uh, the health numbers, we've got seven guests in San Mateo, we've got six guests in Burlingame, uh, and then at the Bayfront uh, for our homeless, we've got 80 rooms uh, um, in place with 15 rooms available. So we're reaching capacity there uh, and uh, trying to make some determinations uh, what to do because we saw some more homeless out there that we're trying to house and we're trying to make room in a shelter for those folks. Um, in regard to testing, uh, again, I wanted to thank Peter and his staff for really working with Verily to, uh, to make this a more mobile and to reach all corners of the county. So uh, starting next week, um, we will be testing in San Mateo Monday, Tuesday, uh, in Daly City, Wednesday, Thursday at the Ceremony High School, and then on um, Friday, Saturday uh, at the YMCA in East Palo Alto. Uh, additionally, Verily is working with the state to see if we have Rite Aid in, in Half Moon Bay as another testing site that would support the county. And then we're looking at potentially 
doing additional studies in targeted areas, something that the county would take on or work with very fairly on um, once we get these other sites up and running. So we hope to, um, to get a lot of people. I think the San Mateo site will be able to accommodate uh, 500. Uh, and then the other two sites, Peter's at uh, 250 a day. So in East Palo Alto, 250 a day. And then in Daly City, 250 a day. Um, and, and certainly that can build as we get more uh, testing kits in and uh, you know that that is loosened up some, uh, but it's not where we want to see it yet. But, but this is great. And it, you know, again, it's, it's a universal um, testing. Um, uh, you know, I went through to see what it looks like and see how it operates. It was uh, pretty simple to, to go online and, and make the appointment, made it within two days. Uh, had probably about a two minute wait time when I went there. This was a self-administered swab. So it's not the, the deep nasal pharynx one. It, was it literally took two minutes to do the swab yourself, put it back in a container, drop it in a bag and away you go. So that is good. So from our perspective, um, more testing is, is good because we get the data behind it and, and that's what we're looking for. We really wanna see what the baseline is in the county and where we're at and how many people are indeed uh, impacted or, or infected, even if asymptomatic. Certainly I have no signs or symptoms, but uh, I was looking more at the process and see what it looked like and I wanna make sure it's available for everyone. Now that leads me to the fact that we need people in place that can help people walk through this process um, that maybe are non-English speaking um, or don't have access to computers and we're putting those processes in place so that everyone uh, that uh, wants to get tested uh, can uh, certainly get tested um, through the process. So we'll be working on that uh, as we roll this out. Um, as, uh, and we're lucky enough to have David Silverman on the phone with us today from County Council. So if there's any questions specific about the orders, I think you realize that uh, we just put out a press release earlier that uh, Scott, uh, Dr. Morrow, um, looks like he'll be moving towards uh, the state um, uh, level of, uh, of uh, openness in regard to retail and other things on Monday. So that uh, you know, we will be mostly in line with the state at that point in, in time. Now, to people question, well, when are you gonna be able to move to the full phase two? And the governor put those, uh, phases in place and, and criteria and milestones that you have to reach. And I just want to go through some of those just real quickly to give you an idea of where we're at. So uh, one of the things, one of the criteria is uh, one new case per 10,000 residents over 14 days. So in San Mateo County, that would be 77. Over the last 14 days, we had 385 cases. So nowhere near uh, meeting that criteria. Um, also, the state is proposing that we should have zero deaths related to COVID-19. Um, for a two week period. And in the last 14 days, San Mateo County had 15 deaths. So we are a long way from zero there. And again, 38 of the 65 were related to congregate living facilities. That's 58% of those deaths. Uh, the state uh, should also, uh, also indicate that we'd be able to meet 35% of the hospital demand surge. We're confident that uh, we are ready to meet that surge right now. And uh, that also the state indicated that congregate care facilities need two weeks to apply a PPE on hand. Um, and we are checking into that to assess that measurement uh, right now to see how many of them have that uh, or have met that. And we must also conduct a minimum number of tests per day. Our highest today was uh, to date was 706, just under one test per day per 1,000. So we believe our uh, capacity exceeds uh, this goal but we want to align the testing capacity to the highest needs um, to be sure the testing capacity is actually realized. So uh, we need to uh, double our number of tests per day. So really we need to get up to um, many, many more than that. And, and remember, it's not only Verily testing, it's the private uh, testers too. And in, in all the testing that we're doing, the um, congregate care for residential facilities for our seniors. Um, and for contact tracing, the state is requiring that uh, you know, they want to see 15 contract tracers for every 15, or for every 100,000 residents. That would mean 115 for San Mateo County. We currently have 40, but I want to get to 150. So we want to act like the National Guard where we have these people in reserve and we call them up as we need them, that they're doing their day jobs, but they, they're trained and ready to step in and join the contact tracers if those uh, numbers are required. Um, so those are the things that we are working on. We do not have the times of, uh, 
uh, that we'll start the, the testing. We should have that by Friday. We're working with barely right now. Nine to four. Okay, so I just heard hot off the press, nine to four at those test sites, um, nine to four at uh, the San Mateo Event Center, at Ceremony High School, and at the YMCA in East Palo Alto. Nine to four on those days that uh, we indicated, which is great. Um, we're also thrilled uh, in regard to communications, the information has gone out that our SMC Strong Fund has topped $8.2 million. Uh, 1.4 million in SMC Strong grant funding has been awarded to 142 eligible small businesses. Um, and, uh, you know, again, that Scott has indicated that he would bring San Mateo County in line with the early phase two guidelines of the governor's resiliency roadmap. Um, so we are uh, on our way to that next week. Um, and with that, I'll go ahead and open it up for questions. Uh, we do, again, like I said, have uh, David uh, Silverman, lucky enough to have David on the phone with us from County Council, who uh, wrote the, uh, the, the orders and uh, is very familiar with the orders and is happy to answer any questions. So with that, uh, let me see if there's any questions. We do have a few questions that came in via email a little bit late, so I'll sure. just read those out loud first. Sure. Uh, we received some questions as to why San Mateo's positive case rate is so high. We know you said the data is essentially meaningless, but any theories as to why? Well, I don't think that data is necessarily meaningless, and, and, it's, and it strikes me that you know we are um, in the best uh, case right now, uh, right, in, in this SI, in this uh, SIP, in the SIP, the shelter in place, um, yet we still have um, you know cases coming in every day, and we're not close to meeting the, the governor's orders. And, um, you know, I, I can't explain that. I, I don't know why that is. Um, certainly, you know, there's people out there conducting essential services businesses, uh, and uh, um, it's hard to say how people are, are, are contracting the, the, uh, the uh, disease, and, and um, uh, it, it's really a, a difficult proposition. We, we don't know. I mean, this disease is a lot unknown about it. We don't know how it spreads and, and uh, how susceptible people are that we know it's highly contagious. So is that shopping carts? Is that doorknobs? Is that uh, offices? But we do know that, you know, uh, the um, total cases in congregate care were 280 uh, of those. So you know, that's small, one small segment of the, of the county. At the board meeting on Tuesday, Louise Rogers talked about state requirements to open and the diverging needs of the local Bay Area counties. What can we expect as far as daylight between regional orders and local orders? And what measures are being taken to ensure the county can open sooner rather than later? Well, I mean, I think that, that, that David, you might want to address that. I mean, Scott's indicated, you know, these, you know, going to be coming in line with the state. So what were your thoughts around yeah. that? I think that what um, the question is referring to uh, and what Louise was talking about was the, and you, you spoke to this earlier, is the, uh, the state has allowed for a verification um, process that allows you to move faster um, than the state is um, generally. And as um, the county manager indicated, we're not gonna be able to meet that um, for a long time, if ever. Um, and the reason for that is that one of the indicators is not having any deaths for 14 days. Um, and unfortunately, I, I just don't think that it's likely that that's gonna happen. So we're just talking about, um, and what, what um, Ms. Rogers was talking about, was getting ahead uh, of where the state is generally. Um, what, what I believe we're going to be doing uh, on Monday is aligning ourselves uh, with where the state is going to be uh, for most counties. Yep. Is that responsive? I think it's exactly with the, with the, an answer to the question. So thank you for that, David. Uh, we've got one hand up. Are any other final questions? Question. Yeah, final question. Are there any observations of other areas opening in some fashion earlier than this area and what, what might be applicable here? Um, is, are they talking within the county? I or? assume they mean other jurisdictions. Other, yeah. <laughs> well, look, exactly sure. clearly there's other jurisdictions. I think, uh, David, uh, maybe 12 now counties have uh, completed the assessation that uh, that they have met the requirements and uh, and the governor has allowed them. I, I know it's, it's the last I checked, it was ten. Um, it's mostly smaller counties um, yeah. in Northern California, um, in in far Northern California. There's about ten of them. It, it's actually up on the. the
the state's website. If I had more time, I could go and list them. But um, yeah, I don't know if the question's asking about like what the, the governor did um, last week and on Tuesday. I mean, I, I can certainly talk about that um, if that's what the question is looking for. Well, maybe if someone's on the line with that question, we can we can ask them to uh, to maybe clarify. But I mean, you know, these I mean, those rural areas are going to have a much easier time than uh, urban areas of, of reaching these goals, obviously. Um, and I think that you know, if you look at these goals that were probably put in place for the more rural areas, uh, to me, because it's like David indicated, it's, it's going to be very very difficult for us to meet uh, some of these goals in the near future. Certainly, the PPE and these other things we can meet if we're not we've already haven't met them. So, uh, and the hospital beds and the surge and all that good stuff, we're, we're in good shape on. Great, and then on to the raise hand, Henrietta J. Burroughs. Thank you so much. Um, you mentioned that more than half of the current COVID-19 cases are associated with long-term facilities. Could you confirm something I heard today that there are more regulations for barber and beauty shops than there are for nursing homes? and that the employees can come in coughing or sneezing, they don't have to wear masks. Is that something that's true? Well, let me, let me first say, I, I was referring to the deaths, Henrietta, so, so more than half the deaths uh, are related, uh, not, not half the total cases, but um, you, you know, we, we talked about this previously that uh, many of these um, employees work at multiple places, they, they don't earn a lot of money, they, they need to, um, have multiple jobs in order to survive in, in this economy and in this environment uh, of San Mateo County, one of the most expensive places to live. Um, so, so that's you know something to consider. But, but I, I, I don't think that anyone in this day and age, I think they're required to have masks uh, if they're an essential services bu uh, business. And David, you can answer that. I'm sorry. What was the question, Mike? I, I didn't catch well, it. it. It could could. Um, Folks come in uh, to work at the uh, residential care facilities without a mask, or not under not under the order. Um, yeah. I mean, the order requires that folks wear masks. If they're not wearing masks, they're violating the, the face mask order. Right, right. So anyway, um, and and just to I'm sorry, Mike. Just to follow up, um, I just pulled up the list. Uh, we were we were both almost right. There are 11 counties uh, that have. Uh, have uh, been approved for variances, and it's Amador, Butte, El Dorado, Lassen, Nevada, Placer, Plumas, Shasta, Sierra, Tulalami, I can't pronounce it, Tulalami, yeah. and you, you, Yuba Sutter County. So, you know, to your point, it's the, um, it's the mountain and, and northern counties. Great, thank you. Thank you, David. You were going to say something else, were you, in terms of the regulations for nursing homes and those who work in the nursing homes? So there's a special order um, that that uh, deals with congregate care facilities. It's on the health uh, website. But what I was saying is that, and it's not it's not limited to help uh, to congregate care facilities. People need to be wearing masks if they're going to be around people. Um, the face mask order requires that. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Henrietta, for the question. Uh, next question. Emily Mibach. Can you hear me? We yes. Can. Go ahead. Hi, Mike. How are you doing? Um, I'm doing all right. Hope you're doing okay. Um, so I have a couple questions about care facilities and then one clarifying question. Sure. So um, with the information for the care facilities, um, I know I think myself and other folks have been asking for that exact information. So why did it take, I guess, a couple of weeks for that to be uploaded? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that, and, and Peter, maybe you can help me with this, but let me just take a stab at it. I mean, you know, our, our folks here are stretched so thin and trying to make sure that they put a, a priority on, um, on, on the things that are really going to be useful and helpful to, to Dr. Morrow and, and, and making decisions. Um, and we want to get all this information out. We really do, but it's just really a capacity issue. Uh, and we want to meet the demands of all of you. And sometimes it just takes us a little longer to do it than we had hoped to. But Peter, do you have anything to add? Well said. Okay. Yeah, that, that, that's the reason I'm like. Totally. Really good, really good and then, 
Yeah, I, I get it. Um, how often will the care facility data be updated? Um, will it only be on specific days similar to the death stats? Yeah, you're right, because it was last updated, it looks like through May 6th. So Peter, right. do you have any sense of when yeah, the idea is to, the goal is to try to get it weekly updated. Okay. But, um, again, the capacity and the prioritizing uh, different mm -hmm. kind of work. Right, and, and then, then rec reconciling numbers with the state too is always a, a right. interesting. Now remember, these are state, you know, um, state has oversight of these and we're just really kind of really trying to step in as a resource for these folks. So um, we're going to try to give you as much updated, updated information as possible. Great. And I think you said um, the other day you've been in, well, not you personally, but the county has been in 144 homes um, or care facilities. Uh, what's the new number? Do you know, Peter, how many? No, we don't. I can, can we get it? We can get it. We can we get it for a Friday? Yeah, for sure. Oh, well, Emily, we'll have that for uh, for Friday for you. Sounds good. And then uh, the last clarifying question I had was um, with the Verily testing sites, that will be every um, set of days. So in EPA, yeah. that'll be every Friday and Saturday. Right, right, right. Okay. For the foreseeable future. Until, right. you know, unless we don't see the numbers, uh, you know, meeting the numbers we want to. But I also want to make clear that these will be. Um, uh, at least in Daly City and in East Palo Alto, walk-up uh, sites too. So we're, we're sensitive to people, to the fact that people, um, you know, in the neighborhood may not have a car or whatever. Uh, mm -hmm. And we want to make sure that everyone has the opportunity to get tested. So there will be walk-up uh, opportunities also. And there will be people on site to really help navigate the system. And uh, prior to that, we'll, we'll have uh, the opportunity to help navigate the system so they can make an appointment. Great. Thank you. Okay. No other raised hands. So we'll no move on other to raised that. hands. Any? Can you clarify what you said at a previous meeting about testing? Currently, is anyone, regardless of symptoms or job, eligible for a test? Is the county suggesting anyone, one place, asymptomatic people should go for a test? It might be a typo. So, so it's it's open to anyone right now uh, who is. Uh, you don't need any symptoms. Like, like I said, you know, I, I went on just, I wanted to see how the whole system worked. I went on, made an appointment in two days, uh, went through this morning, it took me two minutes. It was self-administered. It wasn't the nasal pharynx, the long one that people are afraid of. So uh, it's easy, it's painless. Um, you know, the, are they 100%? I don't think any test is 100% accurate, um, but uh, it's, uh, it's a test that, uh, you know, it's a point in time test when you get the results. Um, you know, it, it's it's good for that point in time. If you're negative, uh, you know, you could be positive a week uh, later, depending on your exposure to, to others who are sick. So, but the, the more data that we have, the more information that we have, and, and that is good for us to really try to understand how the disease is progressing in this county, who maybe is asymptomatic, and um, and maybe positive. Um, so all that information is good, but you do not need a sign or, or a symptoms or rather to get tested now. It is open to everyone. And the next question, can you repeat the expected days of the week for the EPA and Daily City testing? Yeah, so let me just start with Monday, Tuesday of next week, it'll be in San Mateo as it usually is at the event center. And then Wednesday, Thursday, it will be in Daily City at Ceremony High School. And then um, Friday and Saturday, it will be in East Palo Alto. And then we're working on, and that's at the YMCA in East Palo Alto. And, and then we're working on some solutions for the coast um, right now. All right, final call. If you have any questions, please type them in the chat or raise your hand. Great, thank you everyone. Stay safe and we will be back on Friday. Take care.